For many years, Houdini crowd students have been tormented because they couldn't find a way to apply textures to their agents. But blessed be this day, for today we are going to solve that mystery once and for all. Here is my simulation. It's already cached, following what we saw in the previous video. The only difference is that I added a new layer to my agents, a water bottle. So some agents are now holding a bottle and some others are not. This new layer will help us later when explaining how to apply textures. Great, so again, my simulation is already cached and when I press play, it works fine. As you can see, my agents don't have any texture. In order to understand how to apply textures to our agents, we have to explain a few concepts. As you know, 3D models are made up of polygons. There are low poly models, basic shapes with a small number of polygons, and high poly models with thousands of polygons. If we look at the agent node information by placing the pointer on the node and clicking on this eye icon, a window will open with this node's information. We see that there is only one point, one primitive. But if our agent is made up of thousands of polygons, why is Houdini telling me there's only one? And here is where we introduce the packed geometry concept. Imagine you buy a new house and you want to show it to your friend who lives in another country. You have two options. You can carry the house on your back, which I don't think it's a good idea, <laughs> or you can take a picture of your house and send that picture to your friend. That's what we do when we pack geometry in Houdini. To prevent Houdini from loading thousands of polygons for a 3D model, we take a picture of that 3D model, save it in memory, and from then on, the geometry in Houdini will be represented by only one point. When we convert a 3D model into an agent, as we do with the agent node, what we actually do is pack those thousands of polygons from the original model, we take a picture of that model and that picture is what we will handle from then. In other words, what we are seeing here is not the raw 3D model, but a picture of that model. This allows us to work with hundreds and thousands of agents in a very efficient way, because we'll be moving only one point per agent. The only drawback of packed geometry is that we cannot apply textures to it as we usually do. Our agent may consist of one, two or ten different pieces of geometry. And each one of those pieces may have its own texture. But because we have packed those pieces, I will see them as a single piece, the agent. So if I apply a texture, the texture will be applied to all its pieces of geometry, to the whole body of my agent. And here comes the material stylesheet concept. Material stylesheets allow us to apply textures to the different pieces of geometry inside a packed geometry. In other words, with material style sheets, we can go inside that packed geometry, select one of our agent's pieces, and apply a texture to that particular piece of geometry without having to unpack everything. Now, where can I find these material style sheets? Let me split this pane by clicking here on this arrow, top right corner, and split pane top bottom. Now in the lower pane, I'm going to add a new tab, Inspectors, Data Tree. Click here and choose a viewer and select Material Style Sheets. This is a tree view of our Houdini scene. And if I open this OBG, which is the OBG context, I'll see all the geometry nodes I have. Good, go back to the OBG context and let me center the view on my simulation. Now, to create a new stylesheet, 
Let's go here to the Material Stylesheets window and click here on the New Stylesheet button. Give it a name, Runners, and a description if you want, and again, click on New Stylesheet. You'll see here in the tree a new element. This is our new stylesheet. Open it and you'll see it contains three folders imported files, shared scripts, and shared override sets. We won't be using this for now, so don't worry too much about it. Awesome, so here is our brand new stylesheet, but obviously it's empty. Let's create our first style by right-clicking on the stylesheet and add style. A new element called style will appear inside the stylesheet. If we press F2, we can rename it. And the same with the stylesheet. If you want to rename it, select it and press F2. This style we've created will define the style of a specific piece of geometry inside our packed geometry. In our case, with this style, we'll apply a texture to a specific part of our agent. But before moving on, how can I know what pieces of geometry form my agent? If I don't know the name of those pieces of geometry, I won't be able to set up the styles. The easiest way to browse the different pieces of our agent is to use the Agent Unpack node. Go to the Agent Setup and over here let's create an Agent Unpack node. As you can guess by its name, we use this node to unpack our agent's geometry. I'll put the node somewhere here and connect it to the last node of my chain, the Agent Prep. Select the Agent node and in the viewport hold Space and press G to center the view on the selected node. Zoom in on the agent, display the agent unpack, and you'll be able to see in the viewport the real polygons of our agent. If you don't see these lines, go up here to this cube and set it to smooth wire shaded. If you don't want to see the lines, set it back to smooth shaded. Great, our agent is now unpacked. Just for curiosity, let's click on the Agent Unpack Node Info. Look at this, we are now dealing with more than 14,000 points! Now in the Shapes parameter, open the list and here we have all the different pieces of geometry in our agent. The ones starting with Collision are the pieces of the Collision layer. And the ones starting with default, in this case there's only one, the last one, are the pieces of the default layer, the base layer of our character. If we have created any extra layer with the Agent Layer node, as I did to add the water bottle, those shapes added to the layer will appear in the list too. Look at the Agent Layer node, this shape name parameter, bottle. That's the name of the shape that will appear in the list. Ok, so these shapes, starting with default, the ones we actually see, the main body of the character, and the ones created by us, the bottle, are the ones we'll be adding to the style sheet. Let's go back to our material style sheet, to this style we just created. I'm going to copy the name of one shape in the agent and back node, for example, this one called default.ch36, and paste it here as the name of the style, F2, and paste. Now feel free to remove the name from this parameter because we are using this unpack node only for testing purposes. This style will define the texture of the default.ch36 shape, which is the body of our agent. This particular character has only one shape, but some others may have the legs, the arms, the head, even the clothes, 
as separate shapes. But this one, the mannequin, has only one, so that would make things easier for us. Now, right click on Style and add Target. With this target, we will tell Houdini the type of geometry we are looking for. Because we are working with agents, and agents are considered primitives in Houdini, we'll leave the type column as it is, as primitive. Now this style default.ch36 will affect all the primitives in our scene at the surface level. But I want to go a bit deeper. I want to access the primitives that are inside these primitives, meaning not the agents at the surface level, but the shapes inside those agents. So right click on target and add subtarget. Now with this subtarget, we'll ask Houdini to go inside those first level primitives, the agents, and see what's inside of them. And now I have to specify which of those shapes inside my agents I want to apply this style to. We can do that by right clicking on subtarget and add condition. We'll set the type to agent shape because we are pointing at those shapes and in the value field is where we put the name of that shape we want to apply the texture to, which is this one. So let me copy it from the name of the style and paste it here. Perfect! We won't see any difference because we haven't told Houdini anything about textures yet. We've only accessed the shape. Now it's time to add the textures. Let's go to the matte context. This is where we configure all the materials and textures in Houdini. I'm going to create a principled shader node. Go to the Textures tab and in the Base Color section is where I'll put my base texture, what we usually call the Diffuse Texture. Check the Use Texture box and here I would look for the texture I want to apply to this default.ch36 shape. If you are using FBX models, you probably don't have a folder with the textures because they usually are embedded in the FBX files. In my folder, I just have the FBX file. I don't have any textures because they are embedded in this file. If that is the case, what you can do is go to the OBG context to any geometry node, the agent setup, for example, create a file node and import the FBX you are using as an agent. Display the node and now if you go to the folder where the FBX file is stored, you'll see a new folder with the textures. Windows will automatically extract the textures from FBX files whenever we open them in a 3D software. Thank you so much, Windows! Once you have the texture files, go back to Houdini and delete this file node. We don't need it anymore. Go to the map context and now we can look for the texture. I'm going to copy the name of the texture and paste it as the name of the node, so I can identify it later. Awesome, my material is ready! I'll go back to the OBG context, to the agent setup and display the out mannequin. Go to the style sheets window to your style, right click on the style and add override. A new element will appear below with a pink plaster icon. In the type column we are going to choose set material because we want to apply a material to this geometry. And then in the override value field, press this button and look for the material we just created. As soon as I select it, you'll see the texture applied to the agent in the viewport. Fantastic, so we have successfully applied the texture to this default.ch36 shape. 
Now we have to follow these same steps for this other shape, the bottle. To speed up the process, instead of creating everything from scratch, we can do a quick Ctrl C on the style and Ctrl V to duplicate it. Let's change the name of this one to bottle, which is the name of that shape. The condition 2, I'm pointing now at the bottle agent shape. You'll notice the bottle has now the same texture as the body, but obviously that's not what we want. We want to use the bottle's own texture. So I'm going again to the matte context, duplicate this node, choose my bottle's texture and rename the node to bottle underscore diffuse. Moving back to the OBG context, let's change this material to the new one, bottle underscore diffuse. And there you go, every shape has its own texture now.